Uh, my name is Matt Jackson. This is my uh, 09 A4 Avant full S4 swap. When I bought the car, it was a pretty much bone stock, two liter turbo automatic. That was the only configuration you could get in Avant in the B8 platform in North America. Kind of got the short end of the stick, as always, with the wagons. Audi stopped producing the S4 Avant in America for this generation. I took it upon myself to buy a wrecked S4 from Copart Auction, stripped both cars down completely bare shells, and uh, just rebuilt this as the S4. Here we are, it's, it's been a treat. The car is an absolute blast and everything we should have gotten from the, from the factory Audi. The chassis are pretty identical when they come out of the factory. The only thing that's different is the back hatch. The wheelbase is identical, even the floor pans are identical, so there was no like fabricating for the transmission. Even the exhaust fit, so I'm using a factory S4 catback exhaust and that fit perfect, no problem. So the swap is really easier than it appears. It's just getting everything to work factory. Like I said, it's easy, relatively speaking, but then, you know, getting the last 10% to get everything working is really where the challenge is. And this is a car that top to bottom, every single feature works, the factory drive select, you know, the diff, the, the nav, Bang & Olufsen, the power lift gate, backup camera, advanced key, the whole nine. Everything is working as if Audi built it. And that was my whole goal with this car to make sure it was pretty much undetectable that it wasn't yeah. a factory S4 Avant. The supercharger screams. Integrated engineering, dual pulley. So I'm running their stage two dual pulley software, CTS crank pulley and CTS supercharger pulley. So it's making about double what a factory S4 would make. Yeah, so I'll, I'll send you pictures, but that car was literally a tin can. It was like absolutely no wiring on it. Absolutely, there was not one bolt that wasn't touched in terms of like removing anything. So it, it's staggering to see the car torn down in a state that it was and imagine that like this is the same car and there's no squeaks or rattles, nothing broken, everything works. The, the interior is full. S4 that was torn out of the parts car, transferred pretty much everything that there was, seats, dash, all the carbon fiber trim, door panels. So like both cars were stripped down to bare shells and everything that came out of the S4 went into this car, except, <laughs> you know, except for parts that were specific to the Avant, like the headliner. So the headliner, the headliner is special because this is a factory S-Line interior car. So it actually has a factory black headliner, which I only owned the car for about two months before it got swapped. So I didn't really have much time in it to get used to it being like a two liter automatic. I've had it far longer as the state that it's in now rather than factory. So it drives just like an S4 sedan would. And you, again, you would really never know that the car was torn down. It drives fantastic, even with a cargo box on the roof, fully loaded to the brim. Parts car had the sport differential, so that was retrofitted in here as well, along with you know all the other S4 electronics and mechanical. The hole for the slave cylinder, or the clutch master cylinder rather, is there. It's just blocked off from the factory. And then you just swap the pedals everything bolts up and it's just one, two, three from there other than like getting wiring done. Definitely what took me the longest was getting the wiring done. It had to do a lot of adaptations and reprogramming the modules to, so they are aware that it is now in a wagon instead of sedan. Most of the computers in there are S4, but there are some computers that use, you know, specific wagon stuff like the tailgate and stuff that controls the power rear lift gate that needed to be reused from the A4 and then coded and adapted using Otis. I, wouldn't, I don't wanna say there was a little bit of a wall there, but it was, you know, definitely took some time to figure that out and how to integrate everything to make it work as if it was factory. I took the entire body harness out of the sedan. So that harness already had all the manual swap wiring in it already. At the time, this was my first time really going into some deep wiring. So I kind of figuring out as I go, you know, from the connectors that I knew I needed, trace them back to their origin or whatever module they plugged into. And I bought uh, a depinning tool kit, D 
depinned them out of each connector and just transplanted the harness into the S4 harness. So there was no cuts involved, no soldering, no butt connectors, everything. Oh, wow. I took the spare time or the extra time to do that just to make sure that 30,000 miles down the road, there was not going to be any weird issues related to wiring or some you know weird BS that could, could happen. And thankfully, it's been trouble free. It's been about two and a half years. I put 30,000 miles on it. And the only thing that's broken on it has just been typical three liter stuff like thermostat, water pump. But other than that, the car's been great, you know. all these parts on this car that either were not available on this car or it came from Europe. OEM RS4 door handles that are European only, the European headlights and taillights. Uh, the car has a factory glove box cooler, which was not available on the B8 chassis. It came in a Porsche Macon. So I like to say that I've got Porsche parts on my car. Could go on and on all day about little, little nice touches that were added in. But I have facelifted the front and rear S4 B8 and a half front bumper all the black optics grills and everything. Obviously it's on air ride, so that it's quite dumped compared to what it would be factory. Still got the factory mag ride though. I have an AccuAir bag that slips over the, uh, the mag ride shock. So I retain the factory mag ride shock. So there's no, no lights on the dash. They're factory RS5 rotors, pretty much the biggest wheel that you could fit on this platform. It's borderline too big for this car, but I think it fits them reasonably enough a little bit of a smaller tire than what they would come with factory i'm running a 245 30 on them a lot of the times people run into problems when they're trying to take a prestige car and put it into a non-prestige base or the other way around it can be difficult in terms of retrofitting you know the sound system or a car that has keyless entry this and that so if you get a car ideally that are both prestige package cars or premium plus and they both have similar options that'll definitely make life easier in terms of wiring and you know coding adapting and this and that be prepared for the project because it is a lot of work i make it sound easier than than <laughs> it may seem bag and tag and label all your bolts that come out label all the connectors that come out that way a thing that you kind of go into and you learn as you go and you know you go in with the idea that this is possible and just go in head first Thank <laughs> you.